When a smartphone is being marketed as a gaming device, you tend to wonder what's so great about it apart from having good performance and probably a different design from the rest. This is the reason why I got the Razer phone a couple of weeks back to find out how it works as a phone and a gaming device. I'm Warren with KL Gadget TV and this is my full review of the Razer phone. While we're starting to get used to seeing smartphones having a notch and a camera bump, the Razer phone fortunately didn't go for that route. But rather, it uses a more conventional design that resembles the Nextbit Robin, the company that Razer bought over to make this device. You are not wrong to suggest that the design looks a little dated and not as attractive as you would think to be a gaming device, but this form factor makes a lot of sense. In most cases, we use our phone in landscape for gaming, and having a full screen display design doesn't work well at times, as you might actually touch unwanted corners of the screen accidentally. The Razer phone has none of that issue as your palm would rest well on the forehead and chin, and the volume buttons are also positioned really well for landscape use. Despite how well built the Razer phone is, it isn't water or splash resistant, which could be a deal breaker for some considering this is already an essential feature for a flagship. There's also no headphone jack, but Razer has provided a powerful USB-C audio dongle in the package that comes with a 24-bit DAC and is certified by THX. It delivers impressive audio performance to my Sony MDR-1000X headphones, which have experienced great clarity and bass response. Furthermore, the dual front firing speakers are no slouch either. They are further enhanced by Dolby Atmos Audio, which you will be able to perceive great soundstage when watching movies. And in a recent software update, Razer's enabled 5.1 surround sound on Netflix, which sounds really amazing on these speakers. The Razer phone is by all means a performance-oriented smartphone just like the OnePlus 5T. You get a Snapdragon 835 processor, 8GB of RAM, 64GB onboard storage, and a 4000mAh battery with support for Quick Charge 4 Plus. At this time of review, the Razer phone is running an Android Nougat 7.1.1 with the January 2018 security patch. The company has promised an Android Oreo update by Q1 2018, and let's hope they stick to their promise. The Razer phone offers a pure Android experience by pre-installing Nova Launcher Prime, which gives you a certain level of customization over the phone's user experience. There's also a proprietary theme store that offers a number of paid and free themes. What makes the Razer phone such an enjoyable phone to use is the amazing 5.7-inch IXO display panel. While you can't perceive how smooth the 120Hz refresh rate is on camera, it gives you the perception of it being faster than the other smartphones with battery smooth system transitions. In spite of that, not many games are able to take advantage of the refresh rate, though it's still great to know that the supported games listed by Razer are able to exceed the standard 60 frames per second frame rate. They look amazing, with no graphics tearing. Here's the bad thing about the display. It doesn't offer the best outdoor visibility with only 300 nits of brightness. Though I find it acceptable for viewing text, you're most certainly not going to enjoy watching videos or playing games outdoors even at maximum brightness. As a gaming smartphone, the Razer phone sure has some gaming-centric features. Apart from being able to adjust the screen refresh rate, you can also configure how fast or efficient you want the phone to be with the Game Booster feature. Most interestingly, it also gives you game-specific settings, such as setting the CPU's clock speed, screen resolution, refresh rate, and even turn on anti-aliasing when you are in the game. Other than that, Everything feels the same like any Android smartphones, and I really hope Razer could introduce more gaming features in the next software update. Say for instance, a built-in live stream feature to Facebook Live or Twitch would be really useful for some users. The Razer phone's dual camera system comprises of a 12 megapixel f1.75 wide-angle lens and a 13 megapixel f2.6 telephoto lens. Both lenses aren't optically stabilized, which results in blurry, grainy, and noisy photos in low light. But thankfully, it performs fairly decent under good lighting conditions, though I still notice loss of detail in some of the photos I took during my trip to Barcelona. Just when I thought I've seen the worst camera app on the Nokia 8, the Razer phone's camera software is even more underwhelming. It really is pointless to offer such camera hardware if there isn't any camera modes or even a simple manual mode. 
HD also needs to be manually activated as well. And the phone's 8 megapixel front camera is also disappointing. Colors look dull and there's no face beauty feature. The Razer phone's battery life is good. I was able to achieve a full day of usage when using the display at Quad HD resolution and 120Hz refresh rate with some decent amount of time spent on gaming and watching Netflix. And it goes on to the next day when I'm merely using it for texting, web browsing and streaming music. Even though I haven't experienced drop calls on my Razer phone, I find the radio performance to be rather inconsistent at times, where it occasionally disconnects from my Wi-Fi network and 4G signals can fall back to 3G though I'm located at a strong coverage area, which I suspect could be an issue with my unit. Do let me know if you experience the same on your device. As I've mentioned previously in my unboxing video, there hasn't really been a successful gaming smartphone despite attempts by various manufacturers. I wouldn't consider the Razer phone as a successful gaming smartphone, but otherwise, it is a stepping stone for the company as a result for buying Nextbit. It is, nonetheless, a great first attempt from a gaming hardware company. It has the hardware to be categorized as a gaming smartphone, and even more so as a device for entertainment. However, the hardware package and retail price just isn't as appealing as the OnePlus 5T, which comes with a more modern form factor and better dual camera system while sporting pretty much the same hardware specs as the Razer phone. The Razer phone just isn't meant for the general audience, but if what you truly care is about performance, or if you are a hardcore fan of Razer, this is a smartphone that you shouldn't be missing out. If you are interested in getting a unit of the Razer phone, I got mine from Mobile2Go, a well-known phone retailer in Malaysia that sells imported devices like this with a one-year warranty. Links are in the description down below. As for now, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to KL Gadget TV for more videos like this and follow us on the usual social media channels. I'll see you in the very next upload.